Hey guys, just Sander here, and today I'm gonna show you three different methods of creating a heat distortion effect in Unreal Engine and also give you the pros and cons of each method. I'm gonna show you the effect in an environmental context, but of course you're free to use this effect however you'd like. Whether that's at a weapon muzzle flash or at a vehicle exhaust, you can use this however you'd like. So without further ado, let's jump into Unreal. To demonstrate this effect, I built this little desert rock scene using the Quixel Megascans assets which are freely available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. So the three methods I'm going to show you today are using a particle system, using post-processing and using a shader applied on image planes. You can find timestamps in the description down below to quickly navigate between the different sections of this tutorial. But let's get started with the particle effect. For the particle effect, you need to make sure to have the Unreal Engine starter content installed. You can do this by creating a new project and making sure that this is set to with starter content when creating the project. Or if you already have an existing project, simply go to the add new button at the top left corner of your content browser, go all the way to the top to add feature or content pack, go over to the content packs and click starter content and add it to your project. Give it a couple minutes to load and import all of the starter content and as soon as it's done, we are good to go. Now, with the starter content in place, simply open up the folder, go to the particles folder and go to the p underscore fire and duplicate this one. Name it something like p underscore heat distortion. Then simply open up the effect and make sure to remove all the emitters except for the distortion emitter at the far right. This will leave you with only one emitter emitting heat distortion particles, which you cannot see in the viewport. Simply save, close, place it somewhere in your scene. And there you go, a small heat distortion effect. The pros of this method is not only that it's very quick and easy to make, but also that it's easily controllable through code, since it simply works as any other particle system. And besides, it's very easy, placeable, movable and scalable within your scene. The cons of this effect, however, is that it's a lot less customizable since you're bound by these variables from the particle system. Also, it can feel a little bit repetitive since it gets initiated from the same location every time. And last of all, the default Unreal refraction material they use has this effect where it to work great close up, but the further away you are, the more intense it looks making this effect not usable on longer ranges. So this effect will work great in a smaller environment where players get very close to it, rather than very far away due to the refraction getting heavier over the distance. On to method number two, post-processing. For the post-processing, we are going to create a post-processing material. All the assets you'll need for this material are the T underscore water underscore N, which is the normal map for the water material, which is provided in the Unreal Engine starter content. So simply go ahead and create a new material and name it something like heat distortion post process and open it up. Now simply set your material domain from surface to post process. As you can see, everything is now blacked out and cannot be used except for the emissive color, which we are gonna connect with a scene texture node. With the scene texture selected, put it from scene color to post process input zero. With this all set up, we can now apply our material to our post processing volume later. So now let's create the material. We're gonna start by creating a texture sample and importing our water texture in here. This is what causes the ripple from the heat distortion. To make it a little bit more lively, we are going to add a panner to this so it starts moving. From the coordinate, add a multiply node, and in there we can get our texture coordinate, which will basically grab the location on the texture, which we can multiply to create the scale of the effect. I set mine to 0.1, but you can set it to whatever you like. We are also going to make the possibility to control the speed later on from code. 
So simply apply an append to here and get yourself two scalar parameters, one naming speed X and one naming speed Y. You can create this by holding S and left mouse clicking. So link these up and set them to whatever value you'd like. I set mine to one. Now pull out one of these three color nodes since we can only have one of them. So you can't pick the RGB or the RGB alpha and don't pick the alpha since the entire alpha is one. So pick one of the colors. It doesn't really matter which one. Drag it out and attach it to a multiply node. Right here, we're gonna add one more scalar parameter, which we're gonna name intensity and connect it to the B. This one, we are gonna set to 0.5. Now the last step, throw this into an add node, throw it into the B section, and from the A, get the texture coordinate again. Now simply connect it to the UVs, and it should show the effect. Hit apply and save, and as you can see, it's a little bit intense, but we're gonna fix that. Close down, right mouse click on your material and say create material instance. With this instance, you can open it up, hit these check boxes and just tweak the variables however you'd like. You can also get to these variables through your code, allowing your code to be able to change the speed and intensity from the effect. I set mine to 0.025, this one to zero since I only wanted to move up and we, I wanted to be a quite calm effect so I set my Y speed to 0.15. With this all done, simply go over to the top left corner and type post-processing volume and add it to your scene. Now scroll down into your post-processing volume all the way down to rendering features. And there inside post-processing material, simply hit add one, choose an asset reference, and we are gonna drag in our instance of our material. And there you go, your post-processing volume should now work. So now whenever you are in this post-processing volume, you can simply see the effect that we just created, which is a slight heat wave distortion effect. The pros of this method is that it is very random. There is no anticipation of where the new ripples are going to spawn. Also, it is very easy to tweak using the variables of our material instance. The cons, however, are that this effect is being applied everywhere since it is applied to the camera rather than the world. Meaning that if you look down or up, you still see the effect being applied. Besides that, there's a small problem where if the camera aligns with the edge of the volume, it glitches out and intensifies the effect for some reason. Meaning that if you walk in and out of the volume, you will get this little jitter of a very intensified version of the effect. Because of this little glitch, the best way to apply this effect is if it spans over the entire environment you can do that by simply scaling up the volume or selecting your post-processing volume, scroll down all the way to post process volume settings and hit infinite extent within brackets unbound. This means that no matter the scale of the volume, the effect will be applied everywhere in the world. Now on to our final method. For the final method, we are going to create a material that does the heat distortion effect. And because it's a material, it can be applied to anything. So we're going to use it on planes to create the effect on specific places where we want it to show in the scene. For this material, all you need is the T underscore water, where previously we used a normal map. Right now we're going to actually use the texture itself. So go ahead and create a new material and name it M underscore heat distortion and open it up. Inside of this material, make sure to set it from opaque to be translucent since we want you to be able to see through the plane. Now, since we don't want to see any color or any surface, we're simply going to drag out the opacity, connect it to a constant and set it to zero. This will make sure that the plane is not visible at all and only the refraction that we're going to add to it will be visible. So add in another texture sample and turn it into the T underscore water texture from our starter content. Once again, we're going to want this one to move. So we're going to apply a panner to the UVs 
And in this panner, set the X speed to zero, since once again, we only wanted to move up and the Y speed to 0 0.15, same as with the previous material. This we want to be applied over the texture coordinate. We're gonna simply multiply the RGB by 0 0.1 to make it less intense. And make sure to add an add node and set it to one. This way, the refraction will always be above one and apply it to the refraction node. Now go back to your scene, throw in any mesh you'd like. In our case, we're gonna grab a plane, place it and scale it however you'd like, and simply apply the material. And there you go, a heat distortion effect. If you want, you can do the same as we did with the post-processing material and add the parameters to the speed and the, with the multiply for the intensity to be able to control those from your code or from anywhere in the scene through the instance of the material. But for now, I'm gonna simply leave it at this. So the pros of this method are the fact that you can basically customize it however you'd like. In just like with the post-processing volume, except you don't have the glitchy part of that. It's also very easy to customize how it reacts in your scene since you can place it on planes wherever you'd like it to be. And you could even animate these planes to create more variety and make it fully custom the way you like it. Besides that, like I said before, it's easily changeable from code. And you can also toggle on and off these planes using your code, making sure that there is no repetition whatsoever. And besides that, since it's a material, it can be applied to anything, not just planes. So you can use this method to create very cool and varied effects. Like for example, if you get a character, throw the material on there, tweak the variables to be a little more intense, you can create sort of a heat distortion desert ghost, for example. So this method allows for very creative new ways to use a material like this. The only con with this method is the fact that if you don't do these extra steps to vary it, it can become very repetitive since it's always in the same place with the same intensity and it doesn't move. There is no best or worst way to create heat wave distortions. It all depends on the context of your project. So pick whichever method fits your project the best and tweak the variables however you'd like to make sure it fits. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope it helped you out. And if it did, and you created some very beautiful heat distortion, make sure to tag me or send it to me in the DMs. Cause I'm very curious to see how you guys apply these effects. Thank you all so much for watching. And of course, I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye.